All right. Uh, I gave the word in John chapter 8, verse 40, that has from all the sources I've looked at, of course, you, you tried to uh, discount them. However, I, I see that the word anthropos is only used of a human being, and uh, the source that I have clearly, and many other sources, clearly shows that this word distinguishes you know, human beings from God. So therefore, I see that I don't see a God man in there. So I gave that word. Can you give me the word in your scripture that shows that, 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 shows that Jesus is the man God? The one phrase that shows that he is the man, the 100% man, 100% God. Well, well Shadi, with all due respect, um, your assertion on anthropos is utterly without any scholarly merit. Um, the term anthropos does refer to a creature of God. We believe that Jesus was a man. We believe he was fully man. And what you do is you seem to assert that because it means a true man, uh, that because there can't be an incarnation, then Jesus can't truly be God. And that's an assumption that you read in, and you make people, you make people believe that that actually is being derived from the Greek text itself, and it is not. There is nothing in the term anthropos that says God cannot enter into his own creation. There is nothing in Brown, uh, in, in any of the Bauer, Donker, Gingrich, Lowe, and Nita, any of the lexical sources that would in any way even begin to make that kind of assertion. So the, the, the question assumes something that uh, we, we simply don't uh, even begin to believe. So, so are you saying that you cannot present a word then that shows that Jesus is the man God as Christians claim that he is? Well, is the scriptures right? say that Jesus is man. And the scriptures say Jesus is God, and therefore when you accept everything God says, you put the two together and you allow it to speak for itself. You don't make them contradictory to themselves. You were just, I just started asking you about John 20, 28, your response was, eh, it wasn't, it, that, that's not what Jesus said. So any evidence I present you, you just simply dismiss. Um, I don't have that luxury when dealing with the New Testament. I have to allow the New Testament to speak for itself. And I don't engage in that kind of activity when interpreting the Quran either. So I think we're using different scales. No, I don't think so. But my point, again, this word clearly says that he's, he's, he's used for a human being, somebody who's fully human. Which we is believe Jesus was. But no, you don't. You believe that he's fully God. No, uh, again, please don't tell me what I don't believe. Because what you are doing is you're taking what someone 600 years later misunderstood and demanding that I believe him. No, no sir. I believe that Jesus Christ was fully man, and if he wasn't, then I'm going to die in my sins without redemption because he could not have offered himself upon Calvary's tree. Jesus is fully man. That does not change the reality that he is fully God. He, is, he has two full and complete natures. And so there is nothing in the assertion that Jesus is a man that precludes him from being the God-man any more than saying Muhammad was both a man and a prophet. precludes, well, if he's a man, he can't be a prophet. If he's a prophet, he can't be a man. Of course, the both, the both fit together, and you're assuming uh, that Jesus cannot be the God-man because you're not under the authority of the New Testament and you have a, a different authority in the Quran. I disagree because, again, yeah, prophets, and those are all things that we all we know men can be. Is that a question? Yes. We, 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 well, I'm putting up my question to come. We, we all know that men can be these different things. Men can be a prophet, etc. But God is something different. So again, we believe God is something. Word? God is something different. There right. is no question about that. But God created man, and I believe God has the power. If He created it, if He wants to enter into it, no one can tell Him not to. Uh, well, well, again, so again, so let's go to First Timothy two five then, where it asserts that there is for us one God and one mediator between God and man. Once again, Jesus is called the Anthropos, the Man Christ Jesus. 
Explain that. Again, you keep saying that he's is... over these. How, how is he the man? Excuse me. How is he the man God? Yet they keep referring to him as the Anthropos in First Timothy two five. Explain that, please. Uh, I've explained it so many times. I think everybody in the room knows exactly uh, what what I've said. Jesus Christ. According to John one fourteen, the Logos became flesh. The Logos did not cease being the Logos, but he was truly flesh. And the whole reason for Timothy 2.5 is the beautiful truth that it is. There is one God and one mediator also between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He is the one who can bring these two sides together because he is the God-man. Because he is the one who is able to not only live the perfect life, but to give that perfect life in behalf of all those who are joined to him. He is, he, this is the whole purpose of creation itself. And so it is the assertion of the Christian faith that Jesus Christ is fully God and fully man, and that's why he's the only perfect mediator, and that's why eternal life is only through him. And I don't know how much more clearly it can be expressed than that, uh, because the, the problem, Shadid, is you're assuming that there cannot be an incarnation. That's just, it's behind all your thinking, whether you recognize it or not, that's where the problem is. You're, you, you simply deny to God the ability to enter into his own creation. You, you've locked him out. I, I haven't. I haven't. And that's why I'm asking these questions, because I'm trying to understand that. I, I, that's what I said. I, I'm, I'm taking that idea that you're telling us that he, God is incarnate in Christ. Yet, can you explain that? Why do I keep reading scriptures? For, so, example, Romans 15, 6. Glorify the God and Father of our Lord. 2 Corinthians 1, 2, 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that's, that's the language that, this is why we believe in the Trinity, because we recognize, we, we were reading these texts, and remember, we were reading these texts and translating these texts and arguing about these texts for hundreds of years before the Quran came along, written by a man who never read any of these texts. Not once, never makes reference to a single one of them. And we know that, that, that Jesus, as the incarnate one, continues to be incarnate. He didn't get rid of his humanity. He didn't get rid of his body. That's part of the reason why we are united with him and therefore have the relationship to God the Father that we have only in and through him. And so, yes, Jesus was not an atheist. When, as the perfect man on earth, who's he going to worship? It's the second person of the Trinity who has entered into that. They had an eternal relationship. Are they, they've been talking for eternity. Are they going to stop talking for 30 years? Again, it's just, Shadid, you, you, you just won't allow the New Testament to define its own parameters. You're taking a foreign source and pushing it on the New Testament. Okay, very quickly, <clears throat> my time is up. In, uh, okay, since you no, said got three, minutes, got three minutes. In, in Matthew uh, 16, uh, verses... 13 through 17. We see here that uh, Jesus is allegedly supposed to be speaking to Peter about who people say that he is. And so this will be the defining moment that, yes, you are God, you are the God, man, etc. However, we see that uh, Peter goes through some of the things that people are saying about Jesus. But he says, Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter answers that you are the Christ, obviously the Messiah, meaning the anointed of God, not who is God, the son of the living God. And then Jesus answers and sends him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it to you, but my Father which is heaven. No, notice what? The answer was that you are the Christ, not that you're God. And Jesus says that's the right answer, and that obviously his Father had to reveal that. So there, once again, that's the final again, not And again, known. any Christian in the audience is just sitting there going, these are not arguments against Christianity, they're arguments against ignorance of Christianity. When it says, you are the Messiah, that is his function. A function that, by the way, you could never define out of the Quran. Uh, even though Jesus is identified as Messiah, the Qurans depend upon what the Bible says about that to even define what Messiah is. But son of the living God. In jo John chapter 19, when the Jews were, were talking to the Roman authorities, what did they say? We have a law, and by that law, this man should die. Why? Because he made himself the son of God. That was the law against blasphemy. Uh, Achmed Didot was simply wrong. God does not have sons by the tons. Any meaningful reading of the New Testament demonstrates that the sonship of Jesus Christ is utterly different 
than anyone else. He is uniquely the Son of God, has eternally been the Son of God, and hence Peter's confession, Son of the living God, was an amazing confession that required revelation from God because it demonstrated he wasn't just a man. The Son of the living God is a phrase of deity. How, how, isn't, isn't that actually false, though, that this, this claim that claiming to be Son of God is, a, is blasphemy when in the Old Testament? Ephraim is called the Son of God. Israel is called the Son of God. There are many. There are yeah. many. many if, sons if you of God. just allow them. Wait, 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 wait. So, so my question is: Since when did that become a, a law? When the Jews would have already known that they had Scripture that that, that allows people to be called the Son because, of God. Because the Jews did not hold your false conviction that you cannot read the Bible in context, uh, and they recognized there was a vast difference between any kind of adopted sonship and a relationship with God that would require you to be deity. Uh, when Jesus identified as the Son of God, you said, well, you shouldn't believe what the Jews had to say. Um, and, and yet, they recognized that the uniqueness of the relationship that Jesus has with the Father indicated deity. And they were listening to everything that Jesus was saying, not just the little parts of what Jesus was saying. And they recognized that he was connecting his relationship with the Father to the Old Testament prophecies and about one who had eternally been in the presence of the Father. وقالوا اتخذ الله ولدا سبحانه بل له ما في السماوات والأرض كل له قانتون